Another week in the championship is over. And here is the Match Week 5 Championship Roundup. You're going to enjoy. Drop a like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and everything that happened in the last Match Week of the Championship. We're about to round it all up. We begin on the Friday night game where it was, of course, Hull nil, Sheffield United 2. And in this one, of course, Sheffield United remain unbeaten and unbeaten away so far this season. Um, and getting a win here against Hull. Comfortable in the end, 2-0. Gus Harmer with a great goal from the counter-attack. Uh, O'Hare being a huge part in that counter-attack as well. And Harmer as well for the finish was unreal. And then on 66 minutes, McCallum seals the three points to them. Uh, and actually got this prediction correct. Spot on for this one. So quite happy with that. Uh, but no, well-deserved win. Hull weren't bad at all uh, on Friday. Uh, Melham hit the post, hit the crossbar, sorry, from the ha header. Uh, not bad. I think it, if that was a performance against a lower uh, championship side, yeah, they'd probably get at least a draw from that game. I don't know how Hull didn't score in the end, but promising signs. I am liking the look of Hull. Um, yet to get their first win of the season, but I don't think it's all bad for Hull so far. But in the end, Sheffield United get a, a win and continue their unbeaten start to the season. Leeds nil, Burnley won on Saturday lunchtime. What a game this was. What's watching it in the concourse, the final few moments um, before the Swans game. And Coley Osho, 18 minutes in. What a goal that was. And uh, yeah, this game got really feisty, didn't it? Between the home and away fans and uh, Hannibal, and everything that happened in the game. Yeah, really good. But no, impressive from Burnley. Didn't have much of the ball at all, but Scott Parker, of course, able to grind out that result for Burnley. As for Leeds, I don't know how they didn't score. That Joseph miss is a huge one. Of course, Gnanto scores, but it's offside. Trafford was really good in this one. And then, of course, in added on time, Bashir Humphreys gets sent off second yellow cards. Um, but Burnley are able to continue it. Burnley, I think, will be up there this season, definitely in the top two, um, maybe top six if they somehow fall off. But I think top two is the expectation, much like Leeds, but I think Burnley are better off uh, and more prepared to get that as it stands from what we've seen in the opening five matrix, of course. 41 games to go, a lot could change. Millwall nil, Luton won. Luton finally get their first one of the season. It took them five games. It took them long enough. But no, finally up and running uh, at long last. Of course, Mengi with that goal 10 minutes in. I do not know how they only scored one. I, I do not know. Uh, and equally, I don't know how Millwall didn't score. Uh, the Macaulay Longstaff chance where he's, you know, a great save. He's forced out of um, Thomas Kaminsky in the Luton goal to put it around the post. But my word, he should be scoring that. And uh, Luton just about hanging on. They don't do it easy today, but that relieves a lot of pressure off Rob Edwards. And to be honest, I'm happy about that as a neutral because I, I like the, the project going on at Luton at the moment. So first win of the season, now they've got to keep on building on that. Oxford won at Stoke nil. This result, of course, resulted in Stoke sacking Stephen Schumacher. If there was going to be a managerial sacking after this match week, I was not expecting him to be given his marching orders. It's Oxford to get another home win. That's three out of three home wins so far this season. Really good. And it's El Mizuni just after half time with the goal. Really impressive stuff. Stoke for, so far this season under Schumacher. Um, I thought, you know, they've been okay. They haven't been bad at all. And I actually fancied them to finish, you know, and improve on last season's finish. Now it's back to the drawing board. You know, he's only been there since January. Um, and Stoke left to square one again. It just doesn't seem like they're making any progress, Stoke. And I do think they'll be closer to going down to League One than, you know, potentially getting out of the league or having a solid season once again this year, which is really sad to see. Uh, and with the, the form that, you know, Derby, Oxford, Portsmouth, not so much, but still picking up points, um, have started with, you know, definitely could see a few teams that were safe last year probably get sucked into a relegation battle this year and probably go down with how the newly promoted sides are doing so far. Blackburn 3, Bristol City nil. What a game this is. And Blackburn, of course, maintain their unbeaten start to the season. It's three out of three home wins at Ewood Park. And it's three goals in this one. I mean, hats off to Travis for pouncing on that O'Leary mistake. I mean, what is he doing? Uh, trying to pass out from the back and, yeah, it's just not working. And then, of course, it's a hashy with his brace. I said it on the opening game of the season for... Blackburn against Derby. That guy is going to be special. 
And uh, yeah, he, he's already scoring worldies. That second goal is outrageous. But the first one as well, first time, top corner. I think he really is going to be a star in the championship. Him, Dolan, oh, it's really exciting. Really, really exciting for Blackburn. And uh, they're one of the sides now that, you know, you really do think. A lot of people, before the season started, backed them to maybe even go down, just about survive like I did. Um, and now, you know, you're thinking, what could be for Blackburn? As for Bristol City, back-to-back 3-0 -back defeats now, both away from home. Um, really poor and really disappointing, actually. Thankfully for Swans, we play them pretty soon and they're away, so happy about that. But no, Bristol City, not too sure what's going on there. Uh, but back-to-back -back defeats and 3-0 as well doesn't help them at all. And confidence-wise, they look very low on it. Derby 1, Cardiff nil. Cardiff still... Uh, yet to win this season, well, Derby at Pride Park, uh, three out of three home wins this season, unbeaten at home. It's Goodman that separates the two sides. And how did Ebu Adams miss that uh, chance in added on time? He beats Alnick to the ball, runs all the way to the edge of the box, has to just pass it into the back of the net, and he's missed it. Uh, I mean, me, you know, hands out favours to your former club. You don't come much bigger than that, do they? Um, of course, Derby's still getting the three points in the end. But Errol Bullock now surely is going to get sacked sooner rather than later. I mean, if they w lose their next one, he's surely gone. I mean, last year they were playing some OK football. But this year they've taken a completely different approach, trying to play possession-based football. It just doesn't suit them, does it? And they've, you know, obviously not been working on it for long enough. Um, and now they're struggling to get results. And yeah, crisis at Cardiff. Uh, and Derby keep on winning. Great win for Derby there. And how long will Bullock have, if any much longer, at Cardiff? Middlesbrough 1, Preston 1. You have to look at this from a Middlesbrough point of view and think two points dropped, really. They were, of course, in the lead thanks to Tommy Conway. What a signing he's proven to be so far from Bristol City. I always liked the idea of Tommy Conway moving to a team like Middlesbrough. Really did suit both parties there. Uh, and he's scoring goals for fun here. Uh, 16 minutes in, what a ball, by the way, by Luke Aylin. That is just ridiculous. Uh, anyway, of course, I'm beaten at home still so far. They just cannot finish their chances they create in Middlesbrough, which is a shame because once we, you know, as we've said, you know, this is two points dropped. Preston, in the end, all it takes is one chance for Paul Heckenbottom side. Frockier, uh, Jensen with the goal in the end. Um, it's, a, it's a decent goal from Preston, but, you know, it was all Borough, all game, and they'll be very frustrated not to pick up the three points here. Once again, starting the season relatively slowly. Uh, disappointing for them. Preston remain winless away from home, but it is a good point, considering how the game went. Game of the weekend, Plymouth 3, Sunderland 2. What a game this was. 24 minutes in, it's Patrick Roberts with a penalty to put Sunderland 1-0 up. But we're thinking, here we go again. Sunderland undefeated up to this point in the season. Here we go again. Uh, and then, of course, Dan Ballard, who give away one of the penalties later on, scores an own goal for Plymouth to get level. Morgan Whitaker, a big part in that goal. It is unfortunate for Dan Ballard. Just gets in the way of the ricochet off the crossbar, I think it was, or a Patterson save. But Whitaker, of course, popping up with a big moment there. And then, of course, 73 minutes in, Ballard concedes the penalty. Really unnecessary. And Hardy steps up from 12 yards to... Put it away in the corner. Really nice finish. 86 minutes in. Remain Mundell scores a brilliant goal, by the way. What a signing he's proven to be uh, for Sunderland's replacing Jack Clark, of course. Although he was brought in quite a while ago now. But then 93 minutes in, it's the captain, Edwards, to put the ball in the back of the net. Um, quickest to respond from Pat Sonny, unable to collect the ball into the back of the net from Edwards. And home park limbs. Were incredible there. So, what a win. First Rooney win as Plymouth manager. First Regis Lepreeze Sunderland defeat. Disappointing from Sunderland there. But, of course, they were never going to win the whole, uh, you know, every game this season. Uh, but you just didn't expect it to be this game that Plymouth turned up against top of the league at the time. So, fair play to Plymouth. And let's hope we can see a bit more in this, this season from them. You know, Home Park was huge last season to them surviving. 
to be huge again this year and to get that first win now under Rooney will do them the world of good. Sheffield Wednesday won, QPR won, and QPR remain unbeaten away from home this season. This one was late show, a very even contest. I think this will go down in championship history for the way the game went. No goals until the 93rd minute, and what a goal from Barry Bannon. He's sort of on the spin, he's blocked a shot before from a teammate. The ball somehow kept by Wednesday, goes into the box, falls to Bannon, and he's sort of, you know, turning on the spin over his head uh, and into the corner off the bar. What a finish from Barry Bannon. But then, I mean, this is one of the scrappiest goals you're ever going to see. QPR corner, 96th minute, comes into the box. It's a solid few seconds of the ball just in the centre. The QPR goalkeeper Nardi's up for it. Everyone's just piling in, bodies all over the floor. I don't think the ball's barely moving because there's so many bodies in there. It can't get it away. And you can just see the ball move into the back of the net from Lloyd. His first um, goal for QPR, I believe it was. I mean, incredible. The late, late show at Hillsborough. Uh, what a game that one was. Also, got that score prediction. Bang on the money. It ended Swansea 1, Norwich 0. Very happy with this one with the performance and the defending from the Swans so far this season. Not just this game. For Norwich, really disappointing actually. It's a uh, full son, uh, Amankwa, own goal four minutes in. Really unfortunate actually, as Ji Sung Yom, um, you know, hits Fawson on the way in and he can't really do anything about it. Um, apart from put it into his own goal, which of course we're happy about Swans fans, but um, unfortunate there, Swans remained unbeaten at home, something that last season, you know, home form wasn't great at all, but for Norwich, really poor, really disappointing actually, you know, Vigoru made a few big saves, but apart from that, not much that Norwich offered going forward, um, and I was expecting a tougher game against them, for the Swans though, I'm not going to complain, and that is a huge victory, now on to Saturday, against Coventry. It ended Watford 1, Coventry 1. Watford remained unbeaten at home. And of course, in this one, four minutes in, just like the Swansea game, the deadlock was broken. This time, Ellis Sims, who has been quite quiet from the goals uh, recently for Coventry, but gets one in this game. However, uh, Dele Bashiru on 67 minutes gets the equaliser for Watford. Well worked, ball in the box, tapped home, easy as you like. And it's unfortunate there for Coventry. Towards the end, Hadji Wright has a golden opportunity and just can't put it in the back of the net, frustratingly. Uh, they are winless away, Coventry, so far this season. They need to sort that out. They've started, once again, quite slow. And considering the squad they have, a lot of people, rightly so, backing them for promotion this season. Uh, but once again, slow stars in a championship this time around. And the final game of the weekend to round up was Portsmouth nil, West Brom 3. Oh, West Brom the real deal. Or are Portsmouth just very unfortunate here? Um, they've not won at all all season. And, you know, now we're starting to rack up the games. It is getting a bit concerning. They had one of the hardest starts of the season. And they have got points on the board, though, which is a, a real plus side for Portsmouth. Um, I've seen, you know, some Portsmouth fans saying, get Moussinho out. I think that's way too early for that, considering the games and the teams you've had to play already this season. And you know, it's going to be a time sooner rather than later that you're going to have a, a nice run of, you know, easier games against lower championship calibre teams. So that's a huge chance for them to pick up some points. And if you don't then, then by all means, go against the manager. I don't recommend it. Uh, but no, West Brom maintain their unbeaten start to the season. Top of the league now. Really, really impressive from Carlos Corbran's side. In the summer, you know, when you're doing your championship predictions, I put them, I think it was 8th or 10th in the, in the league. I thought, OK, they're going to slip off a bit because of the players they lost. But... You know, Carlos Corbran just works with what he's got. And Mr. Consistent as well. I think they've named in every game. I might be wrong with this one. Uh, West Brom fans let me know. But I think every championship game so far this season, Corbran's named the exact same 11 for all games. Very consistent. Major, or Major, I'm not actually too sure how to pronounce the name. Gets the goal one minute in uh, to send your way end. Um, mental. And then Moat in the second half, of course, with two great goals. The free kick for me, though. Is just incredible in the ninety second minute. Um, three out of three away wins for West Brom. Incredible for them. Moffat's first goal was good as well. Let's talk about that into the top left hand corner from inside the box. But yeah, West Brom. I think they'll be up there once again this season, at least in the playoffs. From match week five, twenty four goals are scored. Goal of the week for me. There's a few contenders. There's not many screamers, but I've got to give it to Alex Moat. That free kick was just perfect. 
and whenever a free kick goes in, yeah, it's going to be highly rated on my goal of the week, um, you know, for the roundup videos. There's a few decent goals this week. I think Mengi against Millwall has to have a, a shout of being up there. Um, of course, the ha a Hashi double, both of them could get in here. I really think he's an absolute baller. Uh, a few really good ones. Barry Bannon, of course, in there as well. The Lloyd goal for the circumstances for QPR. Some great, great goals in there. But for me, I've given it to Moat for the free kick in stoppage time against Portsmouth to put them top of the league. Surprise of the week, it has to be Plymouth. You know, there's no arguing about it. Plymouth beating Sunderland, top of the league. Um, yeah, incredible. And manager of the week has to be Rooney, of course, from that win. Of course, apparently he said at half-time, uh, to his players, you know, we're going to win this game. And that shows great belief from a manager that, you know, he hasn't had a great start to life as a manager, um, you know, in, in his career. So really good for him and really good for Plymouth Flair. So on screen now is what the championship table is looking like after match week five. Of course, we've got more games coming right around the corner after the Carabao Cup midweek. Of course, Saturday games and all of my predictions out for them very soon. And on screen now is how my EFL fantasy did after match week six, of course, they skipped a match week. I don't know if they're going to have double match weeks later on in the season. Uh, it's because I think it was last weekend there were League One and League Two fixtures. So that's a bit confusing. Uh, but no, match week six for their match week five for the championship. And as always, if you want to join the league, uh, the code is in the description down below. And a huge thank you for everyone watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to put your notification bells on so you never miss an upload on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one very soon, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.